This is a tutorial on magnetic circuits about how to use the equivalent electric circuit to solve a magnetic circuit. Why is this in the way? Better. And what's not responding to commands? The equivalent electric circuit is a way of solving magnetic circuits that works if we assume that the magnetic permeability of the iron is constant. If we make it so, we can represent each one of the legs or segments um, of the magnetic circuit by its reluctance, as if it were a resistor in an electric circuit. And in that case, we represent each coil by its MMF as if that coil were a voltage source also in an electric circuit. So we represent the legs of the circuit with reluctances, like resistors, and we represent coils with voltage sources using the value of the MMF for each one of the coils. I better show you how this is done. Ohm's law and magnetic circuits. Ohm's law works in electric circuits because sigma is constant. And then this very simple representation of Ohm's law that says that the current density is proportional to the electric field given the conductivity of the material that is in an electric circuit, we can write at the macro level, like this one, which is the one we're familiar with. V is proportional to R. In the magnetic circuit, if we could only assume that the permeability mu is constant, in that case, and in that case only, and you know that is a gross approximation, we can take in this expression, that the flux density is proportional to the magnetic field. And of course, it's always like so. But mu is not constant. But if mu were constant, then we could write that expression at the macro level as the magnetic potential drop in a segment of the magnetic circuit is proportional to the flux in that segment. Nice, right? And who is that weird R? That we are that is the reluctance of this segment of the magnetic circuit that we're talking about. And we show in class that that reluctance is proportional to the length of the segment in meters, inversely proportional to the cross-section area of the flux in that segment in meters square. Who is mu? The permeability that we are assuming constant of the iron in that segment. And that is given in Henry's per meter. The units of reluctance, by the way, are Henry's inverses, so h to the negative uh, 1. The first thing we do in this method is we identify the legs of the magnetic circuit that has uniform B. You say, in that magnetic circuit between this point, let me use the mouse, let me use the mouse, and why is that biscuit thing on the top? So between this point here, where the mouse is, and this point there, right in the middle, right? Not at the top, and not here either, but right there, right in this diagonal. That's where the length begins, right? Between this point, and there's a diagonal, and this point. I will assume that the flux density is constant, and that that is a segment. I'm calling that segment 3. Down here we have segment 4, segment 1, and segment 2. We identify the lengths of the circuit where we say B is, is uniform. It is the same between this point and that point. And for each one of them, we will compute the reluctance. What was the reluctance? L divided by mu A. Let's compute L. Let's compute A, the cross-section, the cross-section area of the flux. For this one, the cross-section area is 0 0.12 and 0 0.12. That in square meters. And the equivalent length of that one, which is the average between 72 centimeters and 90 centimeters. And with that, and the magnetic permeability, which is this one in this exercise, assuming that the magnetic permeability of this iron is 5,500 times the permeability of airs, compute the reluctance. Sure, there is your formula, you compute that. The reluctance is 8,139 Henry's inverses for this one. We compute the reluctance of every segment in the circuit 
I will do the same. I will fast forward through the computation of the reluctance of the other segments. There you see the dimensions in meters for that core. All right. And I've computed what is the cross-section area of each one of those segments. And then also the equivalent length of each one of those segments. And then I throw in what is the permeability of iron. Like so is 5,500 times 4 pi 10 to the negative 7. And that is mu. And now we can compute each one of the four reluctances like so. All given in Henry's inverses. What do I do next? I next, what I do is I, I put them in series, like so. Because those four reluctances are in series. And this reluctance is in series with this reluctance, is in series with this reluctance, is in series with this reluctance, in the eyes of the magnetic flux that we want to establish in that circuit, those three, uh, the four, those four reluctances are in series. And then that uh, total reluctance multiplied by the flux, which is 12 milliwebers, and that is another piece of data. We multiply them and we get the MMF according to Ampere's law. That is the magnetomotive force that is applied by the coil. And with that and the number of terms, 1200, we obtain what is occurring, which is 0 0.4284 amperes, 0.43 amperes. Let's leave it at that, All right? 430 milliamps should be the current in the coil to create that kind of flux. Under uh, the gross approximation that mu is constant with a value of 5500. You see, we have not achieved any any better solution than the method that we've seen before. But is it, it is uh, just uh, convenient here. I've written the process for each one of the segments with the reluctances at the bottom and the total reluctance of the circuit here on the last column to the right. The reluctance of each one of the elements is on that row. And then I draw the equivalent circuit. My coil I represent with a voltage source with a value and I. And each one of the segments I represent with its corresponding reluctance. They are in series. By all means, this is a linear equivalent circuit. We can use the simplifications that we've learned in electric circuits. And you put them in series, etc., etc., or in parallel, that works too. Under the assumption of constant permeability, we know what is the flux, 12 milliwebers multiply, we get an I, and from an I, we get the current, 0 0.4284 amps. Of course, we round it off to 430 milliamps. Not in the exam, for the sake of web work, please use as many digits as you can. Caveat. This equivalent electric circuit approach works only if we assume that mu is constant. And mu is never constant. It is only an approximation that we use sometimes. May happen in the exam, assume that mu is constant. All right. In, in, and in real life, and in real life too. Look, just so that you do not leave this tutorial with a very false idea uh, that when you represent the magnetic circuit with an equivalent electric circuit, you get the right answer and not just a mere, very crude kind of ballpark solution or answer. Let me show you this actual curve produced by the manufacturer for some iron sheets used to fabricate electric transformers. This is mild steel C1018. Look, look the relationship between the flux density B on the left given in Gauss. Those are CGS units. So Gauss, Gauss, Gauss. So one Tesla is 10,000 Gauss. It's one of the exercises you have solved. And uh, what we have on the horizontal axis is the magnetic field given in Ersteds. Ersted, how do I go from Ersted to amps per meter? Multiply by a thousand and, and divide by four pi. When we assume that mu is constant, so we get a solution, but we do not get the solution. We just get an approximation. And that is the end of this set of slides. It is um, equivalent electric circuit 
tutorial. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next video.